everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Marcy and I am so excited to be hanging out with you today. Today we're going to be participating in Roxy's Weekly Challenge for 2023 and that's the hashtag that you can find all the videos under. This is a challenge by Rachel from Roxy Creations here on YouTube. She's done several of these types of challenges in the past. Um, the, the most recent one was 2021. She took a break last year and then she's done some others like the 3 and 30 and the 100 day project I think was what it was called. I've never participated in these before but since this year I'm trying to build more of my stash and have more ephemera pieces ready. Her challenges are a really nice way to build up your collection in your stash and kind of keep you motivated week to week. I did go out and check at the beginning of the year just out of curiosity to see if she was doing this challenge and she hadn't uploaded the first video yet. So now that I'm aware, I'm a couple of weeks behind. I think she's uploading on Fridays and so I will be probably the following week. For instance, she would be uploading on Friday and then you would see mine possibly a week after hers. It just depends. I will keep up with as many as I can. I don't know that for sure, 100%. I will do all 52 challenges, mainly because there will be times when I'm gone. And so to keep current, I would have to be filming in the moment. And um, that would put me a little behind. But anyway, at the moment, I have a couple of weeks to catch up on. And so we're gonna do that. These are also great examples and things that I can create for my idea books. I hope that you guys will all join in if you're interested um, and then you would use the hashtag Roxy's Weekly Challenge 2023 if you're posting on social media or um, here on YouTube or wherever you can use it in the comments even and um, then when she's out there looking to see who's joining in she'll be able to find whatever you post about that. I believe Rachel also has a Facebook group that you can post in but you'd have to check out her channel to find out for sure. Today we are going to be focusing on her episode one and I believe it was called Four Pockets from One Book Page. You'll see it in the title because I have to put it in the title the correct way and then um, if you click on that hashtag that I also will have in the description box below you can go to her channel and check out her videos, okay? Now I am ready to get started. So hopefully you guys are ready to get started too. So let's dive into it right after this. Okay. The first thing you need are a few book pages. She did six, I believe. Um, she also uses a timer. And while I'm not necessarily going to time myself, I mean, obviously I don't want this video to go on and on, so I'm going to see how many I can do in my normal amount of time. Also, before we get started, I would like to apologize for the weird rattly noise that was in the last video on Wednesday. I don't know what it was. I did not hear it rattling when I was recording. I could hear it the whole time I was editing, I mean loud and clear for most of the video, and so that's why I apologize for it. However, when I watched the playback on my device, I couldn't hear it. So I don't know if you guys could hear whatever was rattling. I do not know what it was. Hope it's not still around. I don't know what it was, so I can't identify it. It could have possibly been my scissors, because sometimes like my scissors, especially my sewing scissors, will just sit and rattle if I don't place them down flat. But my scissors, my regular paper scissors, have not been known to do that. And as near as I can tell, I wasn't using anything different from what I normally do. So I, I just don't know. I don't know what was doing that. I hope that if it starts again, I'll actually hear it while I'm filming. Maybe we can identify it. But anyway, if it was bothering you, I do apologize. I've noticed that the view time is down and maybe that's why. Okay, so first thing I want to do, these are just some basic book pages from a book I picked up for free at the church library cart. And they measure, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight and a quarter by one, two, three, four, five and a half. These were in a book, they were glued in, so they have kind of a rough 
um, hard edge here, so I'm going to trim those off very quickly. There we go. As usual, I am starting without any kind of example to show you, so <laughs> it's going to be a mystery as to what we will turn out with. You can use any size of book page for this. However, I would say not too large and not too small because it's a pocket that is going to eventually wrap around a page in your journal. And so you're gonna want it not too wide this way so that it can stick to a page. So I would say that the most that you're gonna want is four and a half to five inches, you know, something that can fit that space. So just a regular sized book is fine but not too tiny because then you have a dinky little pocket and not too large because then you'd have to trim it down to uh, fit the page and it's kind of pointless. At that point, you might as well just cut your giant book page in half. All right, so it's very simple. What we're going to do is take your book page and lay it on the table lengthwise in front of you. And then we're gonna fold up the bottom edge just about, it's not quite halfway, but just so that it makes like a little pocket. I should also say here that this is based on Patricia Veramonti's book page pockets, one of hers, and, um, and um, Rachel is revisiting that idea, but then she kind of put her own little spin on it. Now, Patricia Viramontes, literally, she just does this, and then you fold it in half. And then you glue here and here, and that's it. I also recently saw um, a video by Kara Brandon. She has a couple of videos out there where she takes the same idea and runs with it and I don't remember when the video was from. I don't remember if it was from last year or just when. I can link that one below and um, um, like I said if you put in that hashtag you will find Rachel's video. But anyway so Rachel's spin was that instead of folding it like this because I think Patricia Viramontes was making these into booklets, Rachel is turning hers into pockets. And so she's putting this little pocket here to the outside instead of to the inside. And then you can glue it to a page. And that's why I say you don't want your book page too wide because once you glue it, um, once you folded it in half and you're trying to glue it into your journal, you don't want this to be so wide that it, it runs into the, uh, into the center of the book. So that's literally it. This is what you do. <laughs> Now, Rachel was using fragile book pages. Mine are not so fragile. But if you had a fragile page, you would want to fold in this edge a little bit for reinforcement, or if you didn't wanna do that, or you didn't wanna sacrifice the space that that's gonna take away from your pocket, you could reinforce it with washi on the inside, washi tape on the inside or the outside, or you could run another strip of paper along the inside, just glue it down, okay? So she reinforced hers like that. So now that I folded it, I, now I have to, I'm kind of committed to gluing that. This is my glue book page here. It's all about boats. I uh, found this book at a thrift store a while ago and, I bought it for the cover, <laughs> and I used the cover on a journal that I made for, as a gift for somebody, but I still have all the pages, so they're not really ones that I would use. Okay, so you would fold this page, fold this edge in, and then flip it over and fold this side down on this side, and do the same thing to reinforce it. Like I said, mine are pretty thick, so I don't have to do that. Then, if you are an inker, you will want to go around and ink all your edges. I don't think I care one bit about inking today, so we're not going to do that. Then what she did was she collaged on the back section here and here and um, just made them look pretty, and she did a pretty simple collage. So. We will be doing that today too. I have tons of um, scraps and pages from the little six by six pads 
and um, that's what I'm going to use. But first, let's prep our pages. As you can tell, this came from, it's a, one of the books on um, Wesleyanism, and um, anyway, if you're into theology and stuff, the holiness movement. So I'm going to see some, I'm going to see like this title that says holiness and holiness and crisis. There's two. Let's see how many we can do. We'll actually end up saving some time because I don't have to. Oh, that one has a pencil mark. Let's do it this way. Since I don't have to fold down the edges to make them stronger, that's actually going to save us a little bit of time. And then also you want to make sure that when you are folding up this pocket that it is straight. I can tell that mine is not. There we go. So these kinds of projects work really well if you are doing an assembly line kind of thing. Then you can get more done. More done at a time. You know, perform one action and then go ahead and perform the next action. So we might be able to do the six like she, like she did. Um, one, two, three, four. And then I definitely want one for my idea book. And then I watched Gail Agostinelli. Um, she didn't actually do them on camera, but she showed she's joining in, just not doing any videos about it. But she decided to make one for her Christmas, um, for Christmas with, as well, so that she could have Christmas ephemera ready. And I think that might be a good idea because I also have my Christmas idea book. So anyway, at the moment, I'm just gonna stick with the six like Rachel did. And then if I want to make a few more, I can. So you're seeing this Friday, and this evening will be my um, my craft get-together night, the monthly craft get-together. Uh, we did not do it, we didn't meet in December, because December's just busy. So I was feeling a little discouraged about just not as much the lack of participation as the lack of it getting announced at church. I just felt like I wasn't wasn't getting a lot of um, publicity about it. And then um, for whatever reason, well, I did pray about it because I was like, okay, Lord, I need a way to broach the subject and not be cranky <laughs> or whiny. I'm going to do seven just so I have the one for my idea book. But anyway, yeah, after it actually got announced, because I, um, I asked, and they said, oh, no, it's not on the announcements, but we'll do it. And then I had several people who um, came up and said they were interested. And um, then the lady that runs the website said, oh, send me the schedule, and I will put it on the website. So that, that felt encouraging. So we'll have to see how many people come tonight. Let's see, I've only got a few left. All right, I'm gonna set these aside because then I can work on some more of these at my at my uh, craft night tonight. Tonight when you see it. <laughs> All right, so punching the thumb notch is extremely helpful because once it gets glued down to the page, that will help things to slide in and out. You can also punch one here. I kind of feel like these are so thick you don't really need it. But once you've glued this to the page, you will have a pocket here and a pocket behind, and then you're gonna turn the page and have a pocket here and a pocket here. So that's how she gets four pockets from one book page. And then you're gonna glue it down along this side and along the bottom on both, both sides. Also, for me, I prefer to put these kinds of things on, um, on a book page that is a little bit heavier that can handle the weight. These aren't too heavy. But, um, you know, depending on what you're making them out of. You can also do this with envelopes, and I'll have to show you that when I get to that point. But uh, you can make a very similar type of pocket with envelopes. However, again, the weight is what you want to watch out for, because if it weighs down the bottom of the page, I don't think that's centered quite. If it weighs down the bottom of the page, then you don't... You don't want it ripping, you know? 
Anyway, that's that's something I'm always concerned about is not gluing things to fragile pages. Okay, so I did not do any of my folding, uh, folding of the edges, because again, so thick. But now we just collage. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Didn't I say we had seven? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, yeah, seven. All right. And you want to give this a good, make sure this is really well pressed, you know, has a good sharp crease. Now we decorate. So I've got um, scrapbook paper. I do have some book pages. I do have Bible page. And um, then I have a few things to use as focal points. I found these cute little birds. I forgot I had ordered them. But these are those scrap, German scrap stickers. And so these are just beautiful birds, but I ordered them from a shop on Etsy called One Day Long Ago. And you can, you can go there too. And these are not vintage, but they are reproduction of vintage stickers. What does everybody have going on? How is your new year shaping up? Uh, this, this page and this page here are reproductions of old pages that they have the look I want. Let's see, I wanna start with, This was when I tried to fold into an envelope and then um, I'm, somehow the measurements got off. So the envelope, oh, somehow the measurements got off. Yeah, no, it wasn't like accidentally mysterious. It was me not, <laughs> not folding it in the right spot. Uh, okay, I wasn't gonna ink, but those white edges, well, actually they kind of blend into the background, don't they? Anyway, my pocket turned out kind of funny looking, so. So I ended up having to redo it, but now I have these pieces of paper. Now you're not gonna have a lot of room to decorate here. It's not gonna be super fancy. It's not gonna be, you know, have tons of room to work with. Uh, so, it's kind of nice because it's really a good another good project for your scraps. Now I've got a bunch of these that look like watercolors. And so I'm going to use them. Seemed like a good good way to incorporate them. Um, I have two or three of the six by six paper pads that were the really thick like collections of things and um, those are perfect because the small scale design is good for these book book pages and let's see let's tear off this edge i feel like i'm all thumbs and i'm probably off off screen again there we go I want to make sure I'm in my work zone, but you guys can see. Close enough for me to see and in the right, in the right area for you to see. So I woke up this morning. We've been having um, a little bit warmer temperatures lately. But this morning, surprise, I woke up and there was snow. Now, I'm not sure if it was forecast or not because... My husband, who is the news junkie, is not home right now. He's out of town on business, and um, he's always got the radio going or the TV, so I get most of my world events and things uh, through him. <laughs> through what I hear secondhand through him. So um, he wasn't here to have the news on. I don't know if it was expected or not, so it's kind of a nice little surprise. Yeah, let's see, let's do that. And then I need a coordinating color. Oh. Well, my pile's going everywhere. Sorry for the grunt. It's <laughs> about to lose something, so I didn't wanna didn't want it to fall off the edge. And of course we're making more scraps. I wanna match this color. I think I see one here that will will that do? Yeah. 
Is that weird to have it two different colors? I was, like, I was just thinking that that is here. Um, actually, you know what I could do? Here's what I could do is just go ahead and use the green on the bottom and then tear a little piece of that. Now that's a little too wide. Yeah, these pockets aren't super deep. Not at all. I'm not liking that edge. I don't like that white edge, so I'm going to use deckle scissors and take it off and it'll still look torn. That's, these deckle edge scissors are so handy. You know what I think I want here actually is a postage stamp. So hang on a sec. I've got a bunch of postage stamps that are just people's faces. And hopefully, hopefully none of them are dictators or despots. <laughs> I don't know who all these guys are. But um, I have a couple pages here. Here, let's try. Let's try this one. Remember my giant binder that I got? I got. I basically paid the postage, and then um, and then the the whole binder of these stamps was for a buck. It was quite an awesome, awesome find. I found it on eBay. But um, it's really nice. It's really nice to have. So I've got all these different colors here. I'm just only going to take out this one page and work from it. Now, is that the right shade? Close enough, maybe? Or is this one better? This one's better. Anyway, it's it's a nice way to, to have stamps to use. Okay, so let's get to gluing. Wasting time. I'll never get six done at this rate. Okay, is that one torn? Yeah. So yeah, I woke up to snow. That was quite the surprise, considering how warm the weather's been lately. We had unseasonably cold weather in November. From the time I got home uh, from Cozumel, the day we got home, it was kind of this slushy mix of rain and snow. And um, then it snowed and rained and just kind of stayed snowy and cold, really cold for couple of months and then after Christmas after New Year's actually we've, we've gotten a little bit warmer so it's kind of warm for typical January but we were having January temperatures in November and December so I kind of feel like it evened out <laughs> and now we're getting our getting our uh, November temperatures in January so who knows what will happen in February uh, very often we get we get kind of a warm spell towards the end of February and then everybody thinks that spring is coming and then March hits and it goes back to being cold and wet and windy and yucky. It always tricks us into thinking that winter's done and it never is. But anyway, it makes me wonder if we're going to have the cold, the warm spell in February or if it's just going to be cold. apologize if I'm shaking my camera. It does have image stabilization on it. I feel like I'm just working in chaos over here. I don't mean to be. How about that? So yeah, Rachel just did real simple like collage -y kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. We're gonna do it. And um, she didn't even worry about if her pieces completely covered the back which was nice, a refreshing change. And then later, you can actually put your focal points on when you use it in a journal, so. Okay, how, many, how much time do we have? <laughs> Wet. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. Not as much as I'd like, considering I've got six more to do. Okay, and then you glue shake this up it's been separating my uh, glue that was being so mean to me I 
did find another bottle of art glitter glue. However, um, I've had it for a little while, but it, it's like it's separated a little bit. So this one was kind of watery, so I keep shaking it up. I don't know if that's because it had gotten cold at some point or not, but anyway, okay, so there's one done. So then we would just tuck something in here tuck something in here and glue it to our page as I showed you before. So there's one. Okay, next. Kind of liking this brick pattern. So let's let's tear. I like this. Uh, there's two pieces and one has a little bit lighter color scheme and this one has a little bit darker. I thought, now why did it do that? I thought when you tear, I thought this should not have the white edge after I tear it. I don't know, I can't say. Set this aside. And who wants to coordinate with that? Probably something very, very bland. So I'll use this one. I'm going to tear off the bottom. Love this old ledger. This is just reproduction. It came in a paper pack off of Amazon. I don't remember how I searched for it. I'm sorry. If I can find the link, I will share it below and then um, it'll be in my. Um, the part that says products I use today. And then also that's, I'm an Amazon affiliate. So if and when I ever reach $10 in um, commissions, basically <laughs> they'll pay me, but I've had that account set up for almost a year now. And I think I'm up to $4 in there. So not like a real money maker, so I don't know. But if you guys click on the links below, it goes, it will go to um, that item. And then if you buy it or in, or use that link to continue to search and buy things on Amazon, then I get a very small commission and it doesn't cost you anything else. And I want to mention it because I always forget. I am moving this because I wanted to know if that curve would line up better with the notch and it doesn't. So what I'm thinking is I'll just turn it over. Okay, we got those two. I'm being rather uninventive and just using the same thing on both sides, kind of. All these little pieces need a basket. I don't have something to toss them in. I wish I did, so I guess I'll go over there. Okay, there's, uh oh, ripped. That's all right. We'll make it look like we meant to do that. Is that how? Yeah. Seems like a weird place for that to have a line, but okay. So I don't know if you guys remember, but last year at the beginning of the year, um, I can't remember the channels that were coordinating it, but they had the Let's Get Organized 2022. And I watched somebody on there who demonstrated how she uses all of her little scraps and Basically, at the end of each project, she takes those little scraps like that and um, collages them into a book or, um, anyway, paper, onto paper. She's already uh, cut them down to size, and then she has like these little tiny, almost like a pre-made tag size to to use when she has when she wants to make collage tags. She's already got the bases done. So it's like a mini master board, essentially. I would love to know who invented collage. It seems like a French kind of a thing. How long has collage been around? How long has it been a technique? And uh, 
you know how is there a right way and a wrong way <laughs> I really don't know I hope I'm getting good at it I really haven't got a clue Oops. lost my ruler it's gonna get dark out there while I'm recording I think Yesterday I was up here working away, just having fun. And I looked up and man, it was dark out and all the windows were open, which I hate because I don't don't like it when I feel like people can stare into my house. But it was a surprise because I hadn't noticed the sun going down. Okay, this is just the easiest bit too wide, even though I just measured it. So I'm gonna have to rip it on the side that there's a tear here, so I don't wanna don't want to make it worse. There we go. So this is a really good time for me to remind you guys um, to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I've been looking at my analytics and noticing how many people watch versus how many are actually subscribed and it's... Um, it's interesting, so if you find yourself watching regularly, coming back, please just subscribe. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button, which you can find in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Oh, and also, I was gonna tell you the description box. Uh, I think YouTube has changed it up now. So when you looked below the video, you used to be, be able to see everything that we typed in the description. Well, now they only show you the first part of it and then you have to click there's a little thing that says more and you have to click that to continue reading but it is right below and there's usually like a little down arrow kind of looking thing like um, it looks, some people call it a carrot I call it an arrow it's like less than or greater than or whatever anyway it points down you click on that and it will expand the description box so you can read the whole thing. So every time I refer to the description box, you can look down there, but now YouTube has it so it shows you the first few lines and then you click more and then that opens it up. And what was the other thing they took away that were changed? I don't remember now, but um, they've made some changes over the last few weeks on how everything looks when you're interacting, interacting with all the up on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna sit here and hold this for a sec so it so it grabs. There we go. Two. <laughs> I am not making good progress. So yeah, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, share my channel, tell all your friends about me and how much you love me. Pretty please, please love me. Uh, let's see, this one is almost wide enough the right width rather and let's see how much is two times what I want right about here ish and I'm gonna tear off one edge I'm going to tear off the other edge, which unfortunately is getting rid of all this natural, well, it's not natural, it was printed on the paper, but what looked like aging. And then we're going to come like right here-ish, and that's not, it's just a hair too wide, so I'm just going to rip. This is me being too lazy to rip each piece individually, or you can call it efficient, it's up to you. <laughs> lazy or efficient, who knows. And here we go. So as you can see, it's pretty quick when you're not talking to people and you can just sit down and whip these guys out and have a few for your box and then you can decorate them in any style you like. Your box, I'm all assuming that you have one of finished ephemera because, you know, <laughs> I don't know why I'm assuming that, but anyway, it's just nice to have, right? 
Let's see, what do we want to go with that? If I have anything, because it is a print. Maybe we could, these came out of the same paper pad ages ago, so I know they'll go together. I'm wondering if I could use this. What do you think? How's it look to you guys? Yeah, why not? Okay, so I'm going to basically tear the width that I need. And then, or the height, I guess. Bottom to top is the height, right? Side to side is the width. All these scraps, okay. And tearing very carefully because I don't want to lose too much of those pretty flowers. It's stuck to me. Okay, so let's do. Other challenges, I think I may do some more of the uh, M's Scrap Busters that Melina Pilot does because, again, she has good ideas of ways to build your stash. And I think that's really going to be my main focus this year. Although, I do want to make a garden theme journal and I was hoping to do it for spring, but we'll just see how my schedule, how my schedule works out. But really, I mean, gardens... Gardens are in vogue all year long. So. Let's do that. And gluing. Let's move those. I started out with my um, bone folder for pressing these down and then I moved over to this card, plastic card. Either one works. And then I have my Rolly Brayer over here. Um, but it's a little too big because these are kind of small scale what I'm working with. So, Oh, cute. What do you think? Shall I try another postage stamp? Here's one that looks kind of pink. And... Hmm. This one is a darker green. Which way does that go? Look, it's India. There's that. And then I think right behind it, though, I would like uh, just a little scrap of, like, some kind of writing or script. Since I have all these little pieces, that will probably work. nice to use up all the little bits as you create so that you don't have them rattling around your desk. Well, my dog is a little bit bored since my husband is not home. You know, I'm going to swap these two because this edge is darker and so with that dark stamp it just looks too dark. But over here this edge is lighter and it, it um, is not too dark with that. And that's just me being weird. You don't have to do that at all. You can do whatever you want because it'll be your project. Do what you like and how you like it. Which way's up? There we go. Come on. Ah! Trying to work very quickly. I don't know why I'm so slow, probably over explaining. Don't know that I will. Don't know how well I'll get these done. I would love to put a little flower sticker here, but I don't I don't have any out, but that would be so pretty. Or a word. Do I have any words? I have words. 
Hang on. Okay, now I have this one I've been trying to use up for forever. Heidi Swap. I got it a long time ago. Not made anymore, so don't go looking for it. Um, how about Welcome, Beautiful New Day? I like that. And I will ink around the edge just so it stands out a bit on the page. Although you don't really have to because I'm not inking anything else. So it might look a little too inconsistent. So I'm going to put that in the middle. And then the other one. How about celebrate the little things? If I really wanted to go crazy, I would put like a little butterfly or something down here. But we're working on being simple, <laughs> not over embellishing, because it's easy to do. It's easy to go crazy. Okay, I want to push that down. Push that down. Okay, this is, here we go. Okay, we're up to three. Okay, number four. Let's see, where do I want to put you guys? Somewhere else. Over there. Okay. Let's do... What should I do? What are the color? I'm going to do some kind of neutral. It's hard to know. I have all these different colors here to play around with. This one's pretty though. Let's see, so I could do this one so that I was thinking I could do it so that it's in half this way to top, but maybe Trying to figure out how to measure this. I don't know. I'm just going to try to use half the image on each side. That may not work. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm making it up as I go. You guys have any little tips and tricks that you like to do when you're working on your projects that makes everything go smoothly? And how are you all doing with your New Year's resolutions? <laughs> Hopefully I'm not bringing up a sore subject or anything, you know. This isn't, it's not for shaming, it's just out of curiosity. Okay, so um, I'm trying to figure out. Okay, okay. Let's see, how wide then? If I, I'm basically gonna cut that guy in half. So maybe that wide. And then I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna put half of it here. Don't need it quite that long. And then I'm gonna put the other half over here. No real good reason for why I want that. I, uh, it just makes me happy. That's just what I thought of doing, so that's what I'm going to do. Come on, let go of me. Haven't used any of my birds yet, so we'll have to use the birds on this. There. I do like that the color of this ivory color on the background, I'm gonna give this a little more glue around the edge. Uh, ivory color on the background, these papers just kind of blend right in, so it's nice. Okay, and now on the bottom, should we have butterflies? I was thinking something a little more neutral than that. Maybe this one, this gray. That 
that would be fine. Okay. Let's tear down. Oops. Sorry if I'm quiet. I'm trying to focus so I can help us get done. Yeah, I'm only going to get four done, but oh well. Say lovey. beginning. That must be it. It's not exactly even, but since they're going to be on two different sides of the page, you probably won't notice. Let's see, are these birds going to be too bold? Ooh, I see one that interests me. Like that one right there. Uh, little scissors. So the thing about these is that you have to cut them apart. Isn't that just interesting? I'm gonna bring this kind of close to my eye so I can see. <laughs> Closer to my face. So. Oh, I thought that was the name of the bird. That was must be the name of the pattern. That's good, because I wasn't sure how I was gonna keep the names of the birds with the birds. Are you free? Nope. Almost fly free, little bird. Fly freely. Must use our adjectives properly. And who would we like on the other side? I might put this little birdie down here instead of up. Yep, I like him. Well, I'm sorry I didn't get more than four done, but... I also don't want to waste your time just to hit a hit a self-imposed uh, goal. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so again, they are stickers. Theoretically, you could you could um, lick and stick, I suppose. Actually, these might not be self-adhesive, but they're reproduction, so it doesn't matter. I wonder at what point stickers were invented, you know, the gummy stickers so that you could lick them and stick them. Like at what point did they start adding glue to the backs of postage stamps and things? Because before, I think you had to actually get out your paste and glue. At one point, I think that's, you had to get out and glue, physically glue your stamps to the, to the envelope and stuff. I'm just full of questions today that I do not have the answers to. Oh, he's so cute. I need to go out and fill my little feeder because the birdies and the squirrels ate all their seed earlier and I didn't worry about it. But now there's snow on the ground, so. So I should probably go out and feed them again. I figured out that um, black sunflower seeds, they both they all enjoy that, so. I think I told you about that squirrel feeder that my daughter got me for my birthday uh, last year. And, and um, it's a unicorn head. <laughs> and the box said, make squirrels more magical. <laughs> like, like squirrels need to be magical, right? Anyway, it was very funny. Well. Let's see, my timer went off. So I will take a sec to add some words maybe here. 
not maybe, I'm gonna do it. Let's see if I have any on my list of words. This is in my shop, it's called Little Words. And I am seeing, these are just generic words that you can use to um, use as labels on your projects. And I wanted them to be more than just dream, believe, <laughs> whatever. I wanted them to have a little more impact, let's say. And I can put it down here. Oh, I had label labels too. Maybe I should do those. Hold on, where are they? Actually, I think those would look really cool as soon as I find them. I These say Paper Studio, so I don't know if I got these. Ignore these, these are for something else. I don't know if I did get these from Hobby Lobby or not. If I ordered them online, because for the life of me, I don't remember. But what I was thinking is, I've used a few of them, so don't have a ton. See, doesn't that look pretty? Can you see? Am I in frame? I hope so. Let's do that. And I really think natural could go down here. And then there's several that say specimen. Oop, come here. Oop, this way. And I could put that up there. Yep, okay, so now all we have to do is hope that we can get our stickers apart because that's always the challenge, isn't it? Without wasting too much time. Yeah, so let me know what you're working on. Let me know what you got going on this week. Pin, I need my pin. There we go, okay. So it's kind of that uh, dichotomy of the soft, pale florals in a, in a loose watercolor and then the more naturalistic, darker, bolder and grungier colors. I like it. I hope you guys do too. I'm wondering if I should just use another skinny label. I think I should, I like that better. I still need a word. Let's see if we can find a word. Should I put it in the middle? Should I put it over there? I'm gonna put it here. I like that. Let's see. I feel like lately I've been watching a lot of YouTube to get ideas, but I'm not actually doing anything. <laughs> I'm spending so much time watching that I'm not actually creating. Let's do beauty. I think that one will be, um, I don't wanna, it's not short, but just not so wide. It should fit, it should fit very well because it's not super wide. What's the opposite of wide? Narrow. Oh my goodness, my words, my words ran away from me. Yay. Well, I've got a fun evening of editing ahead of me. My dog gets mad because, well, uh, we have two of the same armchair. They used to both be in the family room, but now one is in my husband's office and one is in the front room and is kind of the dog's spot now. We have a cover over it so she doesn't get it all yucky, but um, anyhow, <laughs> that's, that's her place and she knows it. But if my husband's like working in his office in the evening or whatever, I go take her chair and then she gets cranky with me because I won't let her lay on the couch in there because she has not treated it as respectfully as I would like. So she's kind of banned. So then she gets grouchy because she has to lay on the floor like other dogs do. I don't know why she thinks she's, she's so special that she shouldn't ever have to lay on a rug on the floor, but she believes that she is above that. She's a bit of a prima donna, and we don't do prima donnas in this house. I used to tell my girls all that to, all the time. Uh, we don't do prima donnas here, so get over yourself. Uh-oh, this isn't going back in. I didn't hear a rattle. I hope I don't hear it in the editing. I really don't know what that was. It was the weirdest thing. This one is not quite... There we 
go. Not quite as square as I would like it to be. Aw, that's so pretty. Okay, boy, I really was ambitious with this pile of paper here. I wanted to have options. What can I say? All right, so what we have here, I'm just gonna spread them out. So you can see both sides. We have the natural beauty of these lovely birds. We have a little bit of a grungy postal theme and watercolor situation going on here. It's kind of an interesting combination of things, isn't it? I should add a word. I'll probably do that later. Word here and a word up here. Interesting mix, isn't it? I was going more for the colors, but the styles styles are different. This one got absolutely no ornamentation whatsoever. He received no decorating. I don't know why. Just didn't, I just didn't want to, I guess. I don't know. Subconsciously, I'm snubbing you. <laughs> just kidding. That's not true. Okay, and then this is the pink and green one, also with some postage stamps and little labels. There we go. There we go. And then that left me with three more to do, but actually one I don't have to do, correct? We can call this one finished because it's going in the idea book. This is it. <laughs> fold it up, fold it in half, punch a notch, boom, done. Okay, so we have five done. So I only have two left to decorate. Yay, okay guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I appreciate it. Um, I love it when you comment and when you say hi to me and when you ask questions and, you know, all of that. It's very fun. We need to do our quote of the day. Can't leave without that. I like this one. It's from like a little calendar of, of clever sayings. A kind heart is a fountain of gladness making everything in its vicinity freshen into smiles. From Washington Irving. A kind heart is a fountain of gladness making everything in its vicinity freshen into smiles. Aw, that's, that's true, I guess. Generally, when you're kind, people respond with a smile, don't they? All right, go out there and spread kindness, okay? Like a fountain, sprinkling everything with kindness. Have a lovely weekend, be inspired, do something creative today, and I will hang out with you some more next week. All right, talk to you in the next video, bye-bye.